Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video it is something very different than usual because I won't be talking about a specific camera gear nor will I actually be taking you guys out for a photo shoot but in this video I was actually inspired and also kind of reminded by my YouTube videos from last year where I actually talked about the gear that I brought with me to Thailand and pretty much my main gear that I bring usually on my travels and uh, since then my gear pretty much changed quite a bit um, these are just some of the gear that I was bringing last year and some of them are here for like honorable mentions But most of the gear like 95% of the time that I travel They're actually in here and it's very different. Even the bag is different It's the 41 liter versus the uh, 31 liter from last year. But anyway without further ado, let's get into the video <laughs> So, um, if you ask me last year uh, how my gear would look like this year or even like starting from mid of last year, I would have never guessed um, the type of gear that would be in my bag right now. And that's because I thought that I was still, you know, into DSLRs and I still want to use that DSLRs. And don't get me wrong, um, the Canon EOS 1DX original still has my favorite Canon color signs, actually my favorite color signs out of any camera. Sorry, that was a hiccup right there. Um, so yeah, I still miss the uh, color signs from this camera every time I use my new gear, but in the same time, for the sake of the convenience, for the sake of um, the things that I shoot and you know the uh, subjects that I actually shoot nowadays versus my subjects that I actually shoot back then and the projects that I shoot back then, the gear that I have in here serves me better and actually delivers, will help me to deliver more than I would actually be able to deliver with the original 1DX. That being said, it is still a good camera and I'm still missing it uh, every now and then. And, and also, of course, if you use the uh, shutter on this camera, it actually is quite nice. It's like a pleasure in your hand, pretty much. But um, yeah, there's that. And also the Canon EOS R, I sometimes do still bring this, but uh, not as often as before for the very reason that um, I'm using the R5 as my main camera right here with the uh, 28-70 f2 as my main camera and most of the time I think like 90 or 95% of the time it won't actually be in my camera bag it will actually just sit right here um, with a peak design clip and uh, unless if I'm going through security or if I'm just um, going through immigration or through um, customs then I will actually put it in my bag because you know if you have a fancy camera out during like security or during the uh, customs check things like that they will most likely stop you and you might have to explain the reason why you have such an expensive camera with you especially if you don't always carry a media pass if you have any so yeah there is that that's my main gear let's move to the side first because this oh, is interesting there are two kind of pods right here. One is a tripod, it's a Peak Design. I totally don't recommend the Peak Design travel tripod because for the quality, you well, for the price, you can get a much higher quality elsewhere. And to be honest, if you shoot a lot of landscapes or if you actually go out a lot to beach, to the beach, um, this is actually not good because sand can actually get easily into it and um, it gets stuck much easier than many other tripods. And to be honest, it's not as sturdy as even some of the 60 euros tripods out there. So yeah, I really don't recommend this tripod unless if you really love the aesthetics and how it collapses in together and things like that. But yeah, it is in general a decent tripod, but I just don't recommend it for the price. Um, then we have this pod here. Well, it's kind of like a pole. It's the uh, GoPro selfie stick. And the reason I have this strap onto this particular strap is because uh, when I do photo shoot videos I can actually just mount my camera up here and that's actually quite useful because I usually go out and do photo shoots alone like in most cases and just having a camera out here it's just yeah I don't need to ask anyone to help me and also uh, it's just great to just have a camera up there instead of a GoPro mounting on my chest the whole time because you know when I first started making um, photo shoot videos that's how I did it and to be honest I did miss a lot of nice shots because it was mounted here like I missed a lot of nice shots that I was framing with my camera so yeah there is that and um, oh yeah a tiny little umbrella 
because why not? Um, I live in the Netherlands. Um, uh, here is a notebook where I usually write a lot of quotes, ideas, poems, um, sketches, and yeah. Uh, power bank, um, 20,000 milliamp, and that is actually enough uh, for most cases. A peak design wrist strap, and that's actually quite nice. Some body and lens caps together, Sony, Canon. Oh yes, I did kind of like replace, not replace, but Fuji system for me has been pretty much moved from rank number two to rank number three, and it got switched by Sony because I started filming online courses and it will be available soon, of course, but um, yeah, I kind of invested more into the Sony side last year as well, that it kind of um, overtook my Fuji system as number two system, and now, yeah, Sony is my number two system and Fuji is my number three system. I still have my Fuji system, I still love my Fuji system, but it's just because of the gear from my Sony side that I have now and the capabilities that, you know, Sony cameras can actually offer over my Fuji system. It's not really worth carrying the Fuji system. <laughs> as much. Anyway, here is a little pouch. It's actually a lens pouch, but I use it to carry all of my postcards. Um, for example, this is from Tokyo, um, then I have from Amsterdam, and of course at the back is my contact details, and I have from like Bangkok, from Germany, from the Netherlands, things like that, and uh, yeah, it's just an easy way to connect with people, and I just find it's an easy way to give back to um, the community to the society because I do take a lot of um, travel pictures here and there and it's just a nice way to share that um, piece that I captured or that piece that I create with people because yeah I took it I designed it I printed it myself so yeah there is that and of course there's the benefit of having my contact in the back if they want to for some ever some reason want to contact me anyway this is actually a memory card um, pouch yeah there are a lot of CF um, there are a lot of SD cards and of course CF Express cards. To be honest, I've been using this pouch since 8th grade? Yeah, and it's still going strong and I still quite like it. I originally wanted to go for the Think Tank one, but for an 8th grader at the time, it was way too expensive and this was like, what, 20 euros? Or even less, like 15 euros? And it gets the job done and it's still surviving, so it's kind of like the testament of the time. Um, Pocket Wi-Fi, very, very important, because if you're traveling a lot like me, it's always good to have reliable, fast pocket Wi-Fi to yourself so that um, you're not sharing your Wi-Fi with other or too many people that you cannot send your work um, as quickly as possible or as quickly as you want it to be. Um, of course, microfiber cloths so that I can clean my screen lenses and what have you. Um, this is the CF Express card reader, which is very crucial, but because of my R5, I'm having to carry this. CF Express card reader and a normal CF uh, card reader as well. So yeah, there's that. Here's a lightning cable because I still use iPhones. And to be honest, I love charging with cables more than wireless charging it, but that's just me. Um, yeah, but it's out there, not in the pouch so that I can access it quickly. My CPS Canon Professional um, Services card um, and pretty much these are the lens pens. So yeah, there is that. I just wasted a lot of time talking about those things. The good stuff are in here. Oh, and it's bloody heavy. I was about to say bloody expensive, but it is expensive to some reason. Anyway, to the top, here is a pouch that pretty much keeps all of my essential cables that, well, dongles and cables as well, that I don't need to always repack them. I can just grab one pouch and go. So I have a redundant copy of that. This is something I started carrying recently. This is very important. Um, this is a photo printer. This is from Canon, but I think Polaroid and Fuji and some other brands also make them. It's zinc photo paper, sorry, zinc photo printer. And this is kind of the photo paper for it. And to be honest, for me that it's crucial is because I love sharing my images with people and I don't like how, you know, platforms like Instagram, for example, is heading and to me it's always still nice to actually give something that's physical to people and something that actually means something to them and not just a digital file. I'm sorry about the siren out outside, I just live kind of next to the main street. So yeah, there is that. These are some of my hard drives that I do edit off, like especially my um, YouTube videos. And uh, yeah, it's, they're not the fastest in the world, but to be honest, they are very uh, reliable for the most part. This is the first camera, well, no, it's the R5. 
But this is another camera I've been really enjoying to, like using lately, and it's the uh, original Canon PowerShot G1X. Of course, you could be asking like, but David, it's not really a good compact camera, even when it first came out. Of course, you could be right, but in the same time, it is such a nice and rugged compact camera that it offers a very different look. Of course, it's not as you know professional as DSLR look or modern mirrorless look, things like that, but because of the uh, kind of the um, old nostalgic digital look that it has, it makes it a very nice camera to just experiment with for me. And yeah, the optics is good. The sensor is still good enough in decent lighting conditions. So yeah, that's why I'm still carrying this lately. Um, a battery grip for my R5 and R6 in case I need it. And I always, always carry two, the um, Insta360 version two, like, yeah, the One X2. Um, yeah, another one is in a different pouch right here so that I know that this is my primary one where all of the main footage is stored. And this is just in case this camera gets corrupted, not the card, but the camera, because sometimes the camera can get corrupted and uh, freeze as well, especially working in Thailand. I learned that the hard way because the temperature is too hot to always have this camera operating over an hour long um, shoot. So yeah, that's why I carry two, um, just to have it as a backup. Let me just leave that there. Um, of course, these are the different chargers. My bag is kind of messy because I took all of the dirty laundry out um, to laundry pretty much. I don't think all of you want to see the dirty laundry from my Switzerland trip. Um, some of the chargers, I tend to carry like dual chargers from the Canon side, for the Sony side, and um, also for the GoPro and the Insta360 in here. This is the um, chest mount. Um, of course, you always need your blower so that you can get rid of the dust. Um, this is the microphone that I pretty much like to use at all time. Like if I'm making, let's say a vlog or something. And yeah, this is pretty much a microphone where I feel like the audio quality is of course not the best, but it's pretty much kind of like worth it within its price range because the control is very nice to use. It's also um, has all these essential modes up here that I can actually program it to. And uh, yeah, I don't need to worry about the battery life as well because it just plugs right into the uh, camera. And overall, I love the base from this camera. Of course, it's not the best sounding microphone, but for the price and for what I do, I think this is pretty much the best kind of microphone I could actually ask for um, right now. And of course, sometimes, like rarely, just rarely, I do get lazy and I just use this as my kind of like voice over mic. So if I don't have enough room in the back to bring my recorder, oh, it's not even out yet. Or um, if I don't have any room in my back to bring some sort of the setup or if the battery in my recorder is like, oh, has run out or something, then I would actually just put this onto my camera and then just press record on my camera and then just, uh, yeah, record it onto the uh, onboard um, uh, sound system. Anyway, let's get other boring stuff out of the way. I have Peak Design straps right here. I am not a huge fan of Peak Design, but in the same time, if I'm already in an ecosystem, why not just stay in the ecosystem? Uh, of course, this is my 70 to 200 f2.8. I remove the uh, tripod collar, not because that the sticker is too thick for it, but because if I'm traveling, I need as much room for other things as possible. And that's why sometimes I just had to, like I would have to leave my recorder here. Um, then here are my other main lenses, the 85 1.2 and the six, no, the 15, yeah, 15 to 35 f2.8 um, RF lenses. So this is where it's also different because if you look at the video from last year, I had the EF 2.8 70 to 200. I had the EF 16 to 35 f4 um, L. I had the EF 85 1.2 L. And now that I'm not using the um, DSLR as my main system, it's really worth it to go for the RF system because it's much better. Uh, it's much faster, it's weather sealed, and uh, yeah, it's also nice. And if I'm vlogging on the Canon side, I do tend to bring this lens with me as well. It's the 16 millimeter F 2.8. It's a nice lens. It's so small that there is no excuse not bringing it, even if I'm already bringing the 15 to 35, because there are occasions where I just want to leave the, eight, the 15 to 35 at home and just bring other prime lenses with me for the photo shoot and then just uh, have this as like a vlogging lens. And yeah, uh, there's that. This tripod, oh, my GoPro has been recording. Oh my God, it's so hot. Shit, sorry, my language. 
Uh, anyway, GoPro Hero 10 because, well, <laughs> funny fact, uh, last year um, when I drowned at the beach here in The Hague, I also lost the GoPro Hero 10, so I ordered this in Thailand knowing that I was going to go to Thailand a few weeks after that, and the day when I arrived in Thailand, um, that evening the GoPro Elo the GoPro Hero 11 was announced. So I unboxed this and then the 11 was announced. But yeah, I'm glad that it's not too different or at least the features that the 11 has to offer, I don't really need it. And uh, yeah, but anyway, mini tripod for, well, whatever reason, um, like mounting the microphone or mounting other cameras. Um, oh yeah, this is another good accessories to have. This is kind of like this, um, Ban, it's from Think Tank, and you can pretty much strap it to anything. You can even have it as the hairband if you want to, but another lightning cable, just because. GoPro charger, the original one. Um, here's my pouch of my essential batteries. Um, of course, I have other batteries scattered in here simply because um, there are batteries that I don't need it as often. This is a mic that I usually bring with me if I'm doing like interviews, or if I want to do vlogs, or if I want to do photo shoots, things like that. Then this is the Rode Video. Uh, mic go it's the uh, the wireless one of course you're seeing the DJI version here but I only use this one for my online courses because there are two and this is only one so this is the first one of course and yeah this is the um, charger for the uh, Insta360 um, the 360 cam yeah I keep on forgetting the name of that camera but yeah here's another towel but this is more for like wiping, you know, dirtier stuff. Like if I'm shooting in the rain or in the dust storms or whatever, then yeah, this is the towel for that. And uh, it's definitely not the type, oh, right, one more thing. Um, uh, it's a fork. <laughs> it's very thin, very light. Um, I don't bring plastic forks, but this is a wooden fork. So that's nice. And I can always wash the wooden fork anyway, and it's much lighter and it takes less space than the uh, plastic fork anyway. So yeah, there is that. And onto this compartment, just for a little bit. Um, I do have all the other like quick access cables if I need them. So for example, if I have this bag stored on the overhead compartment in the uh, aircraft, I can just grab the uh, quick cables like the USB-C cables, my um, AirPods Pro, and some other SSDs that I could actually just edit quick projects on, things like that. Also face masks, why not? Um, things like that. And quick, like other quick cables like USB-C or USB 3.0 cable and also my dongle. And on the side here, promise it's the last pocket, actually it's not, um, are my essential films that I usually like to photograph with, which is the Loma Gray, the um, Pro Fuji Color Provia. Um, this is the Kodak Gold, of course, and that's Portra, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, those are my main films that I do carry with me, which is the hint to my next um, camera in here, which is a film camera. Now, of course, if you watch my videos last year, you usually see me with either the EOS 1 um, film camera or the uh, EOS 500 um, or the 500N, things like that. But I did carry this um, a lot as well last year. Uh, this is just a little pocket that's kind of worth mentioning because it's where I keep my vaccination paper, my official documents, my passports, things like that, and also quick medicine like um, paracetamol, aspirin, um, carbon, things like that. Moving up here, I have the uh, MacBook Pro, the M1, and uh, yeah, it's only the one terabyte version because that's the one that they had in the store at the time, and to be honest, yeah, 16 gigabyte of RAM. That was pretty much what I could afford at the time. Um, but it's actually a very, very good machine. And when I'm at home, I stop using a desktop computer and just pretty much switch over to this, using this, connecting it to my main monitor. And uh, yeah, anyway, in here, my film camera of choice is also my most unreliable film camera. It's the Mamiya 645. This is the 1000S, so it means the uh, shutter speed actually goes up all the way to 1000th of a second versus 500th of a second, which is a more common uh, model for this particular medium format camera. I really love carrying this because it's such a nice camera together with the lens. It's the uh, f2.8 80 millimeter lens. Uh, yeah, it's another Mamiya Senor lens. Um, this is my favorite Sony setup that I usually bring along with me, which is the uh, Sony A7 
4 and the uh, 20 millimeter f1.8 this is the reason why I actually kept my Sony system around and uh, thanks to my online courses that I'm starting to film lately it's the reason why I've been investing more into my Sony system that I could actually use it to film because at, at, at the time of starting the project um, I didn't feel like buying the C70 or the uh, R3 things like that because the R6 Mark II wasn't out and of course I needed the unlimited time recording in 4k so yeah that's why I invested more in my Sony system and another lens I like to carry on my Sony side is the 50 1.4 because I'm not using my Sony system as my main system, therefore the 1.4 is still okay. I don't need to upgrade it to the 1.2. The 1.2 is such a good lens, but again, you know, I'm not doing it as my main, I'm not using it as my main system like the R5, the R6, so I don't need the 1.2. And talking about the 1.2, when I do leave the um, RF, 15 to 35 behind let's say at home I do still bring the RF uh, 51.2 and depending on where I'm traveling to let's say if I'm traveling to Thailand I would definitely bring the 100 to 400 RF F11 as well and also I would definitely bring the 135 um, EF version with the RF adapter because I'm too broke to buy the RF version well I just can't justify the price the quality is good but I just can't justify the price based on how often I just use this focal length it's a bloody nice lens it's a bloody good focal length but it's also very niche focal length for me so that's why I'm still keeping my EF version and I haven't really upgraded to the uh, RF version yet um, I also bring the uh, 51.4 if I would bring along any of my Canon film camera um, or the 85 1.2 EF as well. Another thing that I, another lens that I usually bring with me as well if I'm going to even a much longer distance trip is the kit lens from Sony simply because it's always good to have kit lenses around. Let's say if you want to do some simple time lapse or some simple um, street shooting and you just want to carry like simple one camera one lens setup and yeah having such a nice kit lens like this one is also just you know good to go around with um, and uh, another honorable mention if I'm doing street photography a lot of times I like to bring this with me as well you don't really see it as often on my channel but I do absolutely love this camera it's the TFX 50R from Fuji and it's always mounted with the 63 millimeter uh, f2.8 lens here and it's such a nice combination with really nice balance to it as well anyway um, moving up to the next camera and it's the last camera in this bag which is the Canon EOS R6 now I love this camera and if you're watching a lot of my photo shoot videos you know that I love using the R5 together with the R6 the R6 is always well most of the time having the um, 85 1.2 and the R5 usually most of the time having the uh, 28 to 70 f2 so yeah and in here there is this recorder right here it's the uh, zoom h1n yeah I usually either take this or the normal H1 with me. This is kind of like the version 2, simply because whatever is quicker that I can grab onto, then I would just take it into my bag and just grab and go. So yeah, there is that. These are my main stuff that I carry with me. Oh, always carry this kind of gel in the bag. It helps with preventing moisture into the bag. Of course, there are these little pouches where I do keep like receipts so that I can do some simple bookkeeping, things like that. And also stuff that I randomly would have let's say a uh, cable and also stuff like this for your tablets or your phones or what have you if you're on the train that you can just you know put your phone or tablets and then you'll just be able to watch stuff um, so yeah that's pretty much it um, yeah I haven't made this kind of video in a very long time and I just realized I made a huge mess here um, but yeah oh by the way I have something to show you before the video ends. I know it's getting very long uh, video wise, time length wise. Um, but yeah, this is like a 60 euros roll eye tripod, sometimes 40 euros. And to be honest, it is a very, very, very sturdy tripod. It takes the Arca Swiss kind of mount. And to be honest, there are a lot of times where I would actually prefer this tripod over the, um, this tripod. Of course, the load um, capacity would be much better on this one. So yeah, weighs your pros and cons, but in the same time, 
in rougher environments to be honest this gets me through rougher environments than this because this struggles a lot at beaches that's for sure but yeah i do like having um the peak design head over here simply because well i'm already using the peak design clip i'm already using the peak design straps um handcuffs things like that you know the uh, wrist uh, cuffs things like that and also it's always nice to have the same plate for everything and if i would switch over to this one the arca swiss of course there are so many other accessories for the arca swiss mount but in the same time it's always nice to just stick with one system and therefore this can be more flexible or versatile um, at some point and also the uh, profile of it it looks thinner but in the same time this is a much lighter system and it also is a stable system and in the same time yeah it's much cheaper at 60 euros sometimes 40 depending on the time of the year you get it in and depending on the promotion of course but yeah that's just something for you to consider you know like i'm not saying it's a bad tripod i'm just saying that for the price and for my particular needs there are better tripods out there for less amount of money and uh yeah and that's pretty much where i would like to leave it uh i hope you can actually gain something from this video if you need a free photography guidebook feel free to just click down the link in the description section below it's absolutely for free i will not bombard you with any newsletter nonsense just click and download otherwise thank you very much for watching stay safe Oh yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to also ask me in the uh, comment section down below as well. I will reply my best, well, I'll do my best to reply, of course. And uh, yeah, I hope you can actually gain something from this video. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. Till next time, bye for now.